Hello, my dear students. Welcome back to the lecture. So, in this lecture, we'll try to see what is a chajja or a sunset and how it has to be understood, right? So, the next activity is the casting of chajja or a sunset because we have put the lintel concrete or a lintel beam. After that, you have done the brickwork. Okay. Now, we'll try to see how this chajja or a sunset is to be done. So, uh, practically, you might have seen a chajja something like this. Few people call this as chajja. Few people call this as sunset. So wherever you have provided the lintel, right? Uh, next to that, we try to put a kind of a cantilever element. So this is called as a sunshade or a chajja. You can see you have a opening. That is a window you are having it here. And over that, you are going to put the chajja, right? So again, you can see it practically. Of course, this is a finished product. But uh, how do you do that? Again, it's a cantilever, right? See, we have given a support here. And in this way, it is put. Now, why this chajja has to be put? If you don't put the chajja, there are two, two benefits of providing a chajja. Let us say at the time of rainy season, when the rain falls, okay, so water is going to fall on this and from here, your water will come here. That means what will happen? That is, a, okay, let me, okay, that is the first uh, advantage. Second is that, let us say, the name itself indicates that it is written sunshade because if there is a extreme sunlight, obviously there is an opening here. That means you have a window portion here. Then what is going to happen? Your sunlight is going to enter through this window. And because of that, a lot of heat will be there inside the room. So in order to stop that, we provide this kind of element, which is called as sunshade. It's going to do me two benefit. The first benefit is that, of course, it is protecting from rain. So protection from rain. How it's going to protect the rain? Because once it starts to rain, the water will try to seep through this. I mean, water will try to come in this way. But this sunshade is going to stop it. So as a result of that, none of the water will enter into the window portion. Otherwise, imagine that you're not giving a sunshade. Whatever water falls on this particular uh, brickwork, obviously it's going to come here. Obviously, all the water is going to roll down here, right? So by providing a sunshade, it will not allow the water to pass through that. The second obvious reason it's going to stop, it's going to uh, decrease the intensity of the sunlight by providing a sunshade. Got it? So how it is practically done, you can see we are going to give a, a bottom uh, support to that. We are going to give a props to that. And whatever is the thickness, usually 150 mm is what we try to keep. And based on that, you are going to do the uh, sunshade casting. Now again, practically, you can see it here. Now you need to understand two things. See, uh, we have two ways of casting the sunshade. One is along with the beam. I'll write in this way. One is along with lintel beam. Lintel beam. Second is Second is leave double bars for sunshade after lintel, yeah, after lintel beam casting. Got it? So I'll try, I'll try to explain this. No issues in that. See here. What do you mean by this? The first way of doing is that you can see here, you already provided a lintel beam. Along with the lintel beam, you are given this chajja, that is a sunshade. So along with the lintel beam casting, you are going to do the chajja casting. It's a one way of doing that is along with the lintel beam. Okay. The second is that you are not going to do the casting of this uh, chajja along with the lintel. In fact, when you do the casting of this lintel, if you remember about the double bars at the time of plinth beam, we are going to leave the double bars from this lintel beam in this direction. Okay. And once you cast your lintel beam, maybe after some days, we'll try to put the bottom. We'll put up the prop and with this double bar, we'll try to tie the reinforcement and we are going to do the casting. So that is the second one. Leave double bar for the sunshade after the lint beam, lintel beam casting and then you can do it. Got it? So it all depends how we want to do it. Right? Yeah. Now try to understand this reinforcement. So you can see a kind of a reinforcement given here. It's written typical chajja details. Now this thickness has to be two inches. That is this depth of your chajja is two inches. Okay. And then you see the reinforcement. You're going to provide a reinforcement from here. In this way, your bar is going to go and it's going to take a bend here. And from here, it's going to come here. So this one, whatever you can see, right? It's a beam stirrup. You see here, I did see this is a lintel. Okay. Just try to imagine this particular image with this particular Im image. So this particular element, what you can see, see this much element, what you can see. Yeah, this much element, what you can see, this actual lintel. So you can see the lintel here. This is that lintel portion. Okay. And this much portion, what you're supposed to, uh, what you're able to see this much portion, this is your, this portion. Okay. This portion now coming to the reinforcement part. See here, you have provided a one bar from here. It has gone all the way. 
it has gone inside the stirrup and from the stirrup it has come out right so practically seeing you can see this is that particular bar you can see the bend given here right it is take it has got a bend it has gone in this way got a bend here and of course it has come in this way so practically you can see you are given a bend here it has come here okay it has passed through your lintel beam it has got a bend here and it has come in this way got it whatever you are able to see here the same thing practically we have put it up here right so in this way you are supposed to do now again coming to the reinforcement it is mentioned here this is your main steel the one the top one what you can see in the yellow color which has passed okay so there you have to make use of a 10 diameter bar at 7 inches center to center spacing that means so all these things are my 10 diameter bar and the spacing between them will be 7 inches center to center spacing let me draw the 7 inches over there Again, this is not constant. Okay, seven inches. I have taken this from one of the drawing. Whatever is mentioned in your structural drawing, you are supposed to follow that. But typically, these are the details what we try to follow because there do there won't be any load on this. There won't be any live load. Only the self weight it has to take. Right? Yeah. So ten diameter bar at seven inches center to center spacing. Seven inches center to center spacing. And this is your distribution bar. Now the horizontal bar. Can you see it here? These are your distribution bar. Okay. You can see the one in this in this direction. So these are your distribution bar and what is the diameter of this according to the drawing it has to be 8 diameter bar at 7 inches center to center spacing so this is my 8 diameter and obviously the center to center spacing this is my 7 inches 7 inches 7 inches and so on got it so in this way you need to understand now one question should come in your mind why is that you are going to bring a bar here give a band and take it up to here right isn't it this bar you are taken up to here. Why is that? No, why is that you are not taken it completely? Why is that you are not stopped it here itself? Why is that you have brought it here? That is the main question to be understood. Now coming to the simple uh, logic, what kind of uh, element is this? This is a cantilever element. That means I have a support here. This support is given from the beam, and from the beam I have taken this element. This is my chedja element, right? Same thing. See, you have a beam here, and from here I have given this element, right? So it's a cantilever element. What I have given. Now. When this cantilever is subjected to the load, so if I try to do it here, so I'm considering a uniformly distributed load over the cantilever. Now, from simple strength of material concepts, we all know that what is the bending moment of this? If I try to do the bending moment of this, let me shift this here. Okay, I'll keep it here. Okay, wait. I'll quickly do that again. Okay, so we'll do in this way. Okay. This is that support what I have given. This is my cantilever. Okay. And let me try to load it. Yeah. I'm putting a uniformly distributed load over this. So, can you draw the uh, bending moment of this? Very simple bending moment we are going to get. So, this is that support. And if I do it in this way. Okay. So, this is how my bending moment will happen. I'm going to have a negative bending moment here. And by the time I reach to the end point, my bending moment will be almost zero, right? This is my zero bending moment. This is my maximum bending moment. And of course, we know this bending moment will be WL square by two, right? Where L is the length of your beam. W is a load which comes. This is a UDL load. Let us say I'm subjecting this to uh, a very, I'm taking a random load, okay? Five kilo Newton per square meter. It's a huge load. That much amount of load won't come. Okay, we'll take 0.5 because practically we'll see that. 0.5 kilo Newton per square meter is your load. And this is my uh, L square is the length of my beam. If I divide it by two, this will be the moment which will coming here. And for this, I am going to design my steel. Got it? Yeah. So this is my completely negative bending moment. That means your beam is trying to hog up. It's a cantilever, right? Now you see the pattern. Here you have a maximum bending moment, right? By the time you are reaching towards the end, what is happening to your bending moment? Your bending moment is almost zero here, isn't it? So when your bending moment itself is zero, I don't require much steel. But by the time I am coming towards the support, what is happening? Your bending moment is increasing, increasing, increasing and increasing. So that means at one particular point, let us say, I'm going to consider that this is, this is my cutoff point. I, I'll consider this as my cutoff point. Okay. Now I'll say that my maximum bending moment is here, but let us say up to here, there's a substantial bending moment after the, after here, the bending moment is very less. So I don't require much steel here. So with this concept, if I try to apply the same logic here. Now, can you see the logic behind this uh, reinforcement? So that is the same logic. We have used it and we have given, see, we have given more steel here. Yeah, we, you can see here, we have given more steel here. Then we have given a bend here and we have brought a steel only up to here. You can take a steel up to here also, but why we did not take it? Because by applying the concept of bending moment, 
my bending moment is not maximum here my maximum bending moment is of course up to here this point that is this point but still it's okay to give enough anchorage because it's a cantilever no if i just stop it here only what will happen technically i'm correct but this is not going to get enough support got it if you remember my slab uh, lecture where i taken an example of a eraser and a ruler right because in order to give a anchorage to that we'll try to bring it up to here got it so that is why why this point again it's a cut off point where my bending moment is on a substantial uh, area i mean uh, where, where my bending moment is of a greater value that is why i'm taking it up to here got it yeah so i hope this much concepts are clear so that is why this is a kind of a detailing what we do in the chedja and why it has to be in that way because it's a cantilever portion yeah got it of course you have to give a cover block since it's a chedja uh, you can give a 20 mm uh, cover to that no issues because it will act like a slab and for the slab you give 20 mm and 20 mm clear cover is sufficient okay yeah yeah, practically now you got an idea how it looks practically here. Yeah, again, you can see, see few people do it in this way. Few people do it in this way. Okay, anything is okay, provided you're giving enough uh, uh, anchorage to that. Here you can see, we are not giving a support something like this. Straight away, we are given the bottom steel in this way. That is also quite okay, no issues with that. Okay, you can see here, here also they have followed the same thing. They brought a bar in this way and this is how they have given it. It all depends, but this is the right practice to be adopted. Whatever I told you, this practice that is bring a bar, give the, uh, take it inside the beam and then take it out. That's the best practice what you can follow. Again, you can see it's a cantilever. Okay. You have a lintel beam here. You are given a chedja and this is support what we are given to the chedja. Got it? Yeah. Now practically, you know how it looks finally, once you do the concreting, see, this is my chedja, this is my chedja, this is my chedja. And also here you can see how the chedja is put up. Got it? Yeah. Now, one thing you need to understand, uh, two things. Yeah. One thing we need to understand that we have given a props here, right? So this is support what we have given. So when I do the de-shattering or when I do the decentering, from which side should I start to remove the props? Whether I should, whether I should remove the prop from the inside, because you're obviously you're going to give a prop something like this, isn't it? Right. So whether I should remove the prop from the left to the right, that is whether I have to remove this prop first followed by this, this after this, or whether I should start removing the prop from the outer side. That is, this prop will be removed first, this, this, and this. We'll try to see that, and we'll also try to see the reason behind that. Got it? Yeah. Yeah. So it's written, I've written it here, food for thought. Okay. See it here. Chajja can be casted along with the lintel beam as shown in the figure here, right? So here I'm going to cast my lintel and also the chajja. Sometimes lintel will be casted first with a double bar and later chajja can be casted, which you already seen that, right? So this is a final sun chain. Next, my question is that we are going to give up props here, right? So how do you remove the props? Whether you are going to remove the prop, the one which is outside or the one which is inside, that is the main question. So now you can see the bottom or centering of a chajja can be removed only after the completion of the brickwork till the beam bottom of the above row. Yeah, what is trying to tell? See. I've given a props here, right? So when you're going to remove the props, these props are to be removed only after you have constructed the brickwork. This is my lintel level. After the lintel level, I'm going to construct my brickwork. And once my brickwork is constructed, no, only then I have to remove these props. Otherwise, what will happen? Imagine, imagine if you remove these props soon after the lintel casting and you, you don't have enough uh, counterweight of this brickwork, then this lintel or this chajja what you have provided, it will, it's going to topple. That means it's going to overturn in this direction. Now, since we have given enough counterweight here, because this brickwork will have enough load, right? It's going to put a jamming effect on this lintel. Through this, what will happen? Even if my sunshade or the chajja tries to overturn, this, this counterweight is helping it not to overtopple. Got it? So that's why I've written it here. The bottom or the centering of a chajja can be removed only after the completion of the brickwork till the beam bottom of the above roof. Okay, of above roof. You're getting my question? I mean, you're getting my answer. This much amount, you have to do the brickwork and only then you have to remove the props. That's the first point you need to understand. Second, the centering of chajja should be removed from the free end to the fixed end since it acts like a cantilever slab. That means what I'm trying to tell. Let me put it in this way. Okay. Um, yeah. Let us say this is my. Uh, Chajja, yeah, and uh, I'll do it in this way. So this is a kind of a support what I have given. Got it? Let me go with one more thing. Yeah. Okay. This is a Chajja what I have given. Now I'm going to draw the props for a better understanding. So let me start the props from here. Okay. 
I'll start from here. One prop I have given it here. Second, okay. I hope you are able to get it. I'm drawing the props, okay? That is the support what you can see on the blue color. So from which side you are going to remove the props after the uh, counter effect of this brick work? Whether you want to remove this prop first or the prop from this side. So now we'll try to see what will happen if I try to remove this prop first. If I do that, okay, what has happened now? Can you see what kind of beam it is this? This side it is fixed. Here you are given a kind of a support. So this become my propped cantilever, not prop cantilever. It becomes my propped beam. So this becomes my prop beam. So here what has happened now? Propped. So it is my propped beam. Here if I ask you to plot the bending moment, what would be the bending moment? Of course, this is a fixed support. I'm going to get a negative bending moment. But here, since I've given a support here, it will try to bend something in this direction. So that means you're getting a positive bending moment. You're getting a negative bending moment. Of course, here we have provided the top steel. But since it is a sagging bending moment, we, were we are supposed to provide the bottom reinforcement. But practically, if you check the reinforcement details of this, if I go back, maybe it is quite difficult for you to understand, but still try to understand. Okay. So if I delete this and if I show you, if I delete this and show you, yeah. Now try to see, we have given only the top steel because it is a cantilever slab. Cantilever uh, tension will be at the top side. We have given only the top. But in this portion, there is no steel at all in the bottom, right? So what will happen due to the sagging bending moment, the beam will try to bend. But since there is no steel in the bottom, it's going to crack here. It's going to crack in this way. Okay. So why this crack happened? This crack happened because I, the way of decentering, the way of decentering was wrong. What I should have done, I'll tell you what we should have done. Okay. Yeah. So what we should have done is that instead of removing the props from this side, instead of removing the props from the left to the right, what we should have done is, I'll tell you. Yeah. Yeah. So let us, I'm giving a prop here. I'm giving a prop here. Not this one. Go with yellow. Yeah. So this is the first prop. Second prop. So if you're not able to understand this concept, you can always ask in the comment box. Obviously, I'm trying to, uh, you know, clear it in a more better way. Yeah. Now, the best practice is that try to remove the props from which side, you know, the free end. This is my free end, right? From here, if I try to remove the first prop. Okay, wait, let me do it other way. Yeah. I'll start from here. Okay. Yeah, now it is okay. Fine. Now, when I try to remove the prop from the left side, okay, from the right side, now can you tell me what kind of beam is this? This is still a cantilever beam itself, right? Because this end is fixed. Of course, there's a negative bending moment. Okay. This beam will try to bend in this direction because it's a cantilever. It's a free end here. So you'll be having a negative bending moment and the bending moment is negative only. It's You can see it here, right? So it's not trying to do something like this. In the previous case, what used to happen? There's a negative, but here we are getting a sagging bending moment. But in this case, what has happened? This beam is still acting like a cantilever because you have given a fixed support here and this is a free end. So this is my cantilever action. So now what will happen? That crack will not happen because why? Because it's a cantilever. My beam is trying to go up, right? You, I hope you are able to understand, right? So that is why whenever you try to do the, pro when you, whenever you try to remove the props of the cantilever portion, try to remove it from the free end. This is a very simple logic you can understand. Try, I'll write in this way, try to remove props from free end, free end in case of cantilever. Either it can be a cantilever beam or a cantilever slab. Okay. Always remember this. Many of people, many of us don't know the reason behind that. So I'm trying to explain you all these things in a more better way so that you don't make a mistake. And of course you should be knowing the reason for that, right? So what has happened now? Now this beam will act like a cantilever only. And obviously if it's a cantilever, we have given a top steel there and no crack or nothing is going to happen. Got it. So that is why always remember I've written the centering of Chedja should be removed from the free end to the fixed end since it's act like a cantilever slab. Got it. Yeah. And then if Chedja centering is re removed before the completion of the brickwork up to the beam bottom, or first floor slab level, the chance of chajja overturning is more like I mentioned. The second is that if you don't do this brick work and then if you try to do the props from here, obviously what will happen? This chajja will be always, whenever you put this chajja, 
this chedja will try to overturn always it will try to overturn in this way but since you have provided enough load here no what has happened this load will not allow the unit this entire load is more than the overturning moment to put it in a better way the weight of i'll write in the weight of brickwork brickwork is greater than chedja overturning chedja overturning moment okay so that is why always remember whenever you are putting the cantilever portion and all make sure that you are giving a enough counterweight so that this cantilever portion is not trying to overturn got it yeah so i hope i was able to convey most of the things so that is why you can see it here in all the structural drawing they are going to write centering under all cantilever shall not be removed until sufficient counter load what is this sufficient counter load it is above this we are given sufficient counter load has been provided or as per instruction shown in the detailed drawing or sketches always remember that yeah yeah now again after that you can see it here also a lot of things will be written in the structural drawing centering under all cantilever shall not be removed until sufficient counter load has been provided or as per instruction shown in the detailed drawing okay and then after that all these things we know after how many days we have to remove the column and all we already understood through a code book is 456 it has been written here in terms of um, you know description like a vertical face we know after 24 to 28 hours we have to remove bottom uh, for the beam it has to be uh, after 7 days bottom for the beam it has for the uh, beam it has to be 14 days if it is span is 4.2 meter and for the slab it is something like this okay anyhow you don't concentrate here because this is not required for us we already understood that through a code book right uh, we'll remove it after 14 or 21 days only and uh, for the column we'll try to remove after 24 hours beam bottom and all we'll try to wait for 14 or 21 days and after that we do the deshattering now whatever i have explained you you can see the same logic here you can see they have put a cantilever that is a chedja is put up here but you can see a props is already given and they are not removed the prop why is that so because they are doing this counter brickwork load or counter uh, masonry here so once this masonry is constructed to a certain height only then we'll try to remove this props got it so until then you should not remove this particular props because we know the logic now the moment i try to remove this props and if i don't have a counter weight here this chedja is going to overturn okay and this is a great problem in most of the construction because if you see lot sometimes many failures have happened just because of the chedja right so we don't know the concept behind that that is why we need to understand this yeah so i hope uh, you were able to understand about the chedja how it has to be understood even though it's a very small element it's a very critical element in the big construction and all and that is why we need to understand the logic and the main uh, take away from this lecture is about the removing the props from the free end and not from the uh, fixed end so nowadays what people are doing because even though we write it in the structural drawing people don't follow that so that is why nowadays what has happened if you see i don't have that particular drawing but i had seen it in one of the drawing and this is a normal practice what we see i'll tell you what we are doing nowadays so if you had seen the cantilever detailing what was happening there if this was cantilever i'll do it here yeah i'll do it here okay yeah so what was the kind of a detailing we used to give we were giving a detailing something like this isn't it this was the bar it used to come from here okay got it and then uh, yeah it is coming here and then we were taking up to here right of course but nowadays seeing all this trend people are not following what we are doing is that we try to take it completely in this way up to here we try to take it why is that so even tomorrow if you try to do the deshattering from the free end yeah try to do the deshattering from the uh fixed end so what would have been your negative what would have been your bending moment obviously your bending moment would have been something like this okay i hope you are able to understand so it would have been a negative and since it was a it would have come try to sag in this direction right so since it was sagging bending moment we we were not having the bottom still so that is why in order to take care of this what we have done nowadays we have started to give a detailing something like this so it's okay even though we are on the safer side it's okay because we have provided the bottom still also of course the top still will take care of the cantilever action just in case if you forgot to remove the props from the free end then what will happen it will act like a prop cantilever then this bottom still will help you in taking care of that and the cracks are not going to arise so i had seen this in few of the structural drawing where nowadays people have started to give this uh, bottom still also okay but the best practice is always the, the only this much is enough we know the logic behind that also that is i'll do it here only up to here it is enough okay you don't have to take it forward keeping that in mind about the sagging and acting like a prop beam we are trying to continue it further also got it 
yeah so i hope you have enjoyed it up to here we'll see you back in the next lecture